Hello, Easy Nation, and welcome to episode three of the Darth Easy Show. As always, I am Darth Easy, and welcome to another fun show. And this week we have another fun show. If you're, it's your first time listening to the Darth Easy Show, I'll give you a quick rundown of how the Darth Easy Show works. First, I talk about movies. The latest movie I saw in theaters this week. The classic movie for my classic review I did on the on Sunday on my YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash Darth Easy. Then we talk about the TV shows I've watched this week. And this week we have a total of nine episodes to talk about. I believe that's right. Yes, we have nine episodes to talk about. So we're getting to the end of the fall TV season. Next we talk about video games. And I do have a video game to talk about so that's going to be something new. Next, we have anime. I'll talk about the latest episode of Attack on Titan. And then, we finally will wrap the show up with a book review. And then, we'll, I'm also, we also have our passion project. This is something completely random. I can talk about anything I want in the world of geek culture or anything I really want. Movie, TV, video game, and your book. So sit back, relax, however you're listening to this. And make sure... Before you continue to listen to this, make sure you click that like button if you're watching this on YouTube. Subscribe to it on iTunes. However you listen to it, support the podcast so I can keep doing this show. So, let's begin with the movies. So this week in the movies, we have a very special movie coming that came out. And that was Alien Covenant. Now, I've never been the biggest fan of the Alien franchise. We had Alien, which is a movie that came out back in 1978 or 79. I can't remember which year it came out. And I watched it for the first time. Did not care for the movie. Then last week I talked about Prometheus. And I wasn't crazy about Prometheus. It's a, And this Alien Covenant is a sequel to Prometheus. But I think it's... I actually have to say I really liked Alien Covenant. Alien Covenant, the basic premise of the movie is... You had the humans there trying to settle... Into a new, they're trying to settle a new planet, a colonization mission, and they find this new planet, and it connects back to Prometheus, and we, and that's where we have our movie. Now, one thing I liked about Alien Covenant was we did get to see the xenomorph, and this movie also did a really good job of tying up loose ends from the last movie, Prometheus. Like I said, I was not crazy about Prometheus, but one thing I really liked about it was it made me appreciate Prometheus a little more. Whenever they talked, to, whenever they talked, whenever you bring in David's character, Matthew McConaughey, or Matthew McConaughey, <laughs> see, I uh, must be tired after just watching the movie. Uh, when you have Michael Fassbender, when Michael Fassbender shows up as David, and he has a, he plays two characters, he plays David, and then I forget what the other android's name is, but he has like a more southern accent or American accent, so that was kind of cool to see, and. But, and you find out the fate of the of the Prometheus crew and what happened to Doctor Shaw. A very very sad ending to his character. As always, this it's this will be a little bit of a spoiler review. Saying so you find out she died and she was basically a test tube for David trying to perfect the xenomorph. And you're just like, what the hell, David? And we knew. And this is not too surprising because if you remember from Prometheus, David was the mastermind. Of Shaw getting the alien stuck in her in her belly, then y'all and then she was all and David's the one who infected uh, her boyfriend or husband. So it's not really too surprising. This movie does have its very horror elements to it. Like I said, this movie is very much more like Alien mixed with like Prometheus. One day I liked whenever they were talking about Shaw or David, they were using the original score from Prometheus. And I didn't like Prometheus that much, but I did very much like the... I really much like the score of Prometheus. I'm a huge scores and soundtracks kind of guy. And I have to say, I really, really enjoyed Alien Covenant. My score of Alien Covenant is an A minus, very enjoyable movie. I lo- I like Alien Covenant. It's uh it's worth checking out. 
It's probably my favorite movie of the summer so far. It's either that or King Arthur, Legend of Sword. So, we're checking out. Now, before we conclude the movie segment, we've got to talk about the classic movie of the week. So, the classic movie of the week, not really a classic movie. And that is Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. This is a movie that came out back in 2011. Now, as I said last week, I'm not a fan of this franchise. I've not been keeping a secret. Now, I don't... I think this is better than the second and third one. But I don't think it's much better than than the other two. And, but this movie is stupid. It's, it's just as stupid as the other two. Mainly you have Jack Sparrow and the Spanish. You have the English. And then you have... You introduce the character Blackbeard, played by Ian McShane. I really like Ian McShane as an actor. I, I talk about him all the time on American Gods, as he's uh, one of the main stars of that show. But I really I really enjoyed Ian McShane as an actor. I thought he did a pretty good job in this movie. But the stupidest part about this whole movie was the sword that can control the boat. That was the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. Come on, that's just... Come on. Come on. What are you doing? Come on. So I'm not crazy about that. And this movie, it's not as bad, but there's nothing really to remember going like, eh, it's better, I guess, but not really. I did not care for Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. You can check out my full review on YouTube, but I gave this movie a C plus. It's not a great movie. So I, now it's time to move on to our second segment of the show, TV Reviews. This is the TV Reviews of all the shows I've watched this week. So first we're talking about The Flash, Season 3, Episode 22, and Fantino Street. So this episode, they've been teasing for this half season, ever since the mid-season finale, that, that Iris West was going to die. And they've been trying to stop it. Well... It turns out they couldn't stop it. Iris West is dead. And the bazooka, the speed the speed force cannon did not work because that Prometheus ha- Prometheus oop, he had whatever his name, Savitar had the Philosopher's Stone in order to to block the speed cannon. And it's it was over and Iris dies and very sad, very sad death because I really like Iris West. Now, who knows if she's really dead? Personally, I kind of hope she stays dead. That's one thing wrong with comic book movies. And then you even having the, like, I mean, look at the Avengers. Avengers, they kill, they, they kill Phil Coulson. And then in Agent Shield, oh, Coulson's not dead. He's alive. And it never shows back up in the movie. And they're just like, I want him to actually kill characters off. And I, Iris West, I mean, they can't fix it with time travel because Barry has gone back to fix fix stuff in the past, but I don't know if this will be better or not. You also brought back Captain Code. You bring back Captain Code, you see the Wave Rider. Flash needs to steal something from Argus, and he has to go back in time to get a thief because his powers do not work in Argus. So he grabs back up the best thief he knows, and that's Captain Cole. It's always oh, great seeing Leonard Snart back in the show. It's sad that he's dead in Legends, but it's, it was great It was great to see him. Overall, very enjoyable episode. I very much like The Flash. And I'm really curious to see what the season finale. So, the next episode I'm talking about is Arrow Season 5, Episode 22, Missing. And this is a new one more call. This, every week I'm going to name what's going to be the episode of the week. And this week, the episode of the week is Arrow. So this episode of Arrow was just really, really good. First off, you had Prometheus' get, uh, minions. You had or you had T- Talia Al Ghul, the girl that Oliver trained to begin the season before she went all Anakin Skywalker on him. And it's you know, and. They they take uh, all the Illy and you and you know what that's the one thing I'll give credit to the Arrow team this season who created this season. This season of Arrow has been really really good, and I think the reason it's been really good is at the, the season finale. It's usually the season finale of Arrow. It's the city is gonna blow up. They all have to come together, and they decide to do something very very different this season. They decide to end it uh, kind of quiet. They're on Lee and you, and Oliver has teamed back up with. With Malcolm Merlin, played by John Barrowman, and he's teamed up with Nisa Algul, 
And this the the final part of the episode, you see Oliver recruits no one other than Slade Wilson, or what's known as Deathstroke. Great seeing Deathstroke back in the show. We got to see Manu Bennett in the show. Oh, I cannot wait for the season finale. But I gotta talk about the flashbacks. Because you have good old Ivan Drago, that's not his real name, but you know, yeah, Dolph Lundgren, whose character, he basically gives Oliver some kind of drug, which makes him relive all the painful scars he had lived through the past year. You're, he's touching every scar, and you see the you see the flashbacks of all the pains from the first season, from the second season, from the third season, from the fourth season. And it was such a great way, because we're, we're wrapping up the flashbacks in Arrow, and it was such a great way to do this episode. And we get to see Yo- we get to see Yofet back or Yonfet, whatever his character's name, the Asian guy from the first season of Arrow. It was great to see that character again. And Oliver's like, I gotta kill myself. I gotta kill myself. And Laurel's like, No, you have a job to do. Get to it. Great episode of Arrow, and I'm really looking forward to the season finale of Arrow season five. Been one of the best seasons of Arrow probably so far. So now we're talking about. S- Survivor Game Changer, Season 34, Episode 11, Parton is Such Sweet Sorrow. This was a double, this was a double Tribal Council episode, and this was just a, it was a crazy episode. The first half, it was a double Tribal Council, so the first half, Andrea goes home, and I was like, I was sad to see Andrea go home, but you had to give credit to Sari that Sari was like, yeah, good move on her. The second part of the episode was when things went crazy. So Ty was thinking about making a big move, taking, take, getting rid of Sarah. Well, Sari was like, "Hey, Ty's trying to get rid of you." Sarah's like, "No, no, he's not." And Sarah's like, "I'll even prove it. Here's my advantage. It, my, her advantage was one extra vote. So with the one extra vote, that meant she can't. That means uh, it was kind of to show a sign of trust, which I really liked the move. But Sari was like, "I'm gonna play this thing." And she had this idea to blindside Ty, and it just did not work. And Sari was getting ready to play her. Sari was getting ready to play the twist, and Sarah's like, "Yeah, that's mine. Give it back." She's like, "Uh, no, it's mine. No, in the my thing, it's in the rules. It says it's not. It's not transferable." And Sari was like, "Oops, I guess I should have read the rules." <laughs> and and it was just it was a great a little funny moment. I mean. I think Cerise one of those great Survivor players, but, you know, everyone makes mistakes. Very funny episode, and then at the end, you see Michaela going home. It's going to be interesting who actually wins this season of Survivor. So, next episode to talk about is Doctor Who, episode, season 10, episode 10, 6, Extremist. And this episode was, I guess, a dream or something. You had these alien species who kind of created images of the Doctor who was, they're trying to figure out a way to doc, to beat the Doctor. And the do, and the Terry version of the Doctor calls the Doctor to defeat him. And you also get a, you get some flashbacks in this episode. We see who we see who's actually in the time vault. And it turns out to be no one other than Missy. Otherwise known as the Mistress or otherwise known as the Master. One of the Doctor's oldest friends, and we and we finally found out why she was in there. And the Doctor has been protecting the vault, making sure she can't get out for a, a thousand year sentence. So it's a very it was a very interesting episode, and I like Doctor Who this season. So now we're the title of this episode, if you're watching, is the season finale of Samurai Jack. This is Samurai Jack season five, episode ten, episode CI. So I'm going to talk about the episode, and then I'm going to talk about the season overall of Samurai Jack. So this episode of Samurai Jack, you have a broadcast televised of a who says, I win, I win, I win, I beat the samurai, I'm going to kill the samurai. And Aku is just, he's pulling the classic James Bond villain mode. He's like, I have captured the samurai. I'm going to show the whole world. And then all of Jack's allies just show up to save him. Now, I do realize this is a cartoon show. But you also have to realize, how did it get there so fast? And you were like, in there a minute, like, we're going to save him, Jack! And it was just like, what? Okay. And it was a very cool, it was a cool episode. Um, and Jack's trying to get through to Ashi. 
And Jack gets her to Ashi by telling Ashi, she's like, Ashi, I love you. And it broke the spell. And Ashi is fighting Aku. And Jack's like, Ashi, you you have Aku's power. She's like, I do have Aku's powers. And then she activates the time travel. And Aku's like, oh no, I fucked up. And there was just such a great moment of the episode. So, with the... And then, Jack goes back in time, kills a coup. The darkness that a coup has done, the show's over. But we do have a sad moment where Jack's getting ready to marry Ashi. But Ashi disappears. Ashi says, without a coup, I've never existed. And it was a very sad moment. But then, at the end of the episode, you have the little ladybug, which is kind of signs of her goodness. And he just has a smile, and the show ends. Great show, Samurai Jack. So my, I gave Samurai Jack Season 5 a very good review because it's a show that I was never expecting to get closure on. And it was such a great way to finally end Samurai Jack. Very great show. This Season 5 was a very dark. I recommend checking it out. I recommend checking out the entire show of Samurai Jack. It's a very great show. Worth checking out. So, make sure you go on my YouTube channel to check out my review of Samurai Jack, Season 5 review. Now we're talking about The Leftover, Season 3, Episode 6, Certified. So, this episode of Leftovers, we had... This was basically a Laura-centered episode. And Laura, the part of the episode, we see Laura where we knew she was pregnant from the Season 1 uh, episode where it went back to the happening, I have how everyone disappeared, and oh, I hope I didn't get heard. So, anyways, this ep- so we get to see why Laura actually uh, joins the guilty remnant. We found out that she was pregnant, and after the event, so many people disappeared. Her pregnant t- child disappeared as well. And it was a very sad moment for her. You kind of get why she joined the Guilty Revenant. I mean, to think, if you're trying to have a kid, or if you didn't even want a kid, but you had a kid, and then the kid just freaking just disappears, and you're like, what the hell? So, that was a very absurd moment, and Laura's drugs, and the uh, Kevin Sr., and you also find out what Nora's doing. This is a very interesting episode. They want Kevin to die so he can get the song from... Mr. Sunday, and it's a very interesting, but who knows what's actually going to happen with this show. We got two episodes left. I'm curious what's going to happen to Nora. The final episode is called The Book of Nora, so I'm curious really how this show is going to end. Very inter- very cool episode. I look forward to see how it ends. And next we have American God, Season 1, Episode 4, Get Gone. This is Get Gone with a G.I., so very Southern. So this episode, we find out the story of Shadow's wife, of how why she's up on that bed at the at the end of the last episode. So I like this episode, and we got a little backstory of why of of how the two met, how they fell in love, and and why she's on the bed. Basically, she's a zombie. That's the best way to look at it. She at the end of the at the end of after she gets after she dies. You had her just sitting on the bed, waiting for, waiting for, sh- waiting for Shadow. But she, uh, when she comes back to life, you had the Egyptian guy who shows back up. We saw him at the beginning of episode three, and it was great to see another character that we've seen. I was like, hey, some of this stuff is actually paying. Uh, it's actually paying out. So it was great to see that character uh, again. And the character's like, once this is over, he's like, you believed in nothing, so. When you die, you're not going to have anything. And this was a uh, this was a very cool episode. We find we, You get some Easter eggs like why who actually destroyed the blood. I thought it was going to be Ian McShane who actually did all that. But it actually turned out to be this her his wife. So it's a very cool episode. I would like to see a little more stuff with the gods. Why did she come back? But I'm sure we'll get some answers or not. So the next episode we're talking about last week tonight with John Oliver. This episode, season four, episode thirteen. I call it stupid Watergate. What what else is the show? We're talking about the stupid things going on in the Trump administration. Trump firing the FBI director. And John Oliver went really deep into really what what's been going on with the 
Trump administration and how they keep making mistake after mistake after mistake of how Trump's been given FBI has been given classified information to Russia, which is kind of funny because you know he kind of told that Hillary Clinton couldn't be president because she gives away classified information. Well, Trump, you gave away classified information. What the hell are you doing? So it was sorry if I just blasted your uh, ears at that moment. So. Very funny episode, and uh, it's just, wow. I mean, if he gets impeached, and who knows what's going to happen. So, the final episode to talk about on my TV segment of the show is Better Call Saul, Season 3, Episode 7, Expenses. This episode, we have, all, we have, we have Jimmy McGill trying to make sense of his life. He's got to do community service. He's trying to make advertisements to make good and he's also trying to get revenge on his brother and it was very very funny moments in the episode very good moments in the episode you see jimmy he's he's just trying his life's kind of falling apart and then you also have kim who's kim's kind of falling apart as well because she's like she's kind of tearing herself up it's like we did all this to a really sick man and jimmy's like he did all this crap to me my entire life i don't feel bad for him and and then Jimmy's manipulating the insurance of the lawyers to go after Chuck. So that should be a really interesting of how that turns out. So the finale, and then the the other part of the episode, we had Nacho, who works for Hector, who works for he- Hector, and Nacho's plan. He bring we bring back that drug guy from the season one that Mike originally worked for. And it was great to see, and it was great to see some of these characters come back. And not just plan to kill Hector. Maybe this is why Hector ends up in that chair. And you know what? The thing about Better Call Saul is we're getting to that moment when Saul. We're waiting for Jimmy to become Saul Goodman. We getting, we're getting there. And that's why I'm like, I like they're not rushing it. They're taking their sweet. They're taking their time for the show. So I very much in like, I very much like this episode. And I'm curious to see where it goes the rest of the season. Very great episode, and that ends the TV segment of the Darf Easy Show. So next, we're going into video games. Now, video games, I play Star Wars The Old Republic. I started Knights of the Fallen Empire, the expansion to Star Wars The Old Republic. And I'm almost done with the story. I'm very interested to see how it will actually end. Very great to see. I, lo- I, very, lo- I very much like this uh, episode. I, I very much like Knights of the Eternal Throne. Or of the Empire, I'm, I'll probably play Knights of the Eternal Empire a little more probably here tonight or rest of this week. So I'll have a full review. I'm probably not going to review. I'll probably just talk about it on here. But I also picked up today at GameStop. I picked up Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5, which is basically the remastered versions of Kingdom Hearts and Kingdom Hearts 2. They also have other stuff. I'm not going to play those because you know what? I just want to play. I just want to replay those games. So, overall, I really like the... So, I, I'm liking what I'm playing of Knights of the Fallen Empire. And I think I'm pretty close to the finale of it. So, next, we're moving on to the anime segment of the show. And we're talking about Attack on Titan. And this is episode 5. Forget what it's called. But the episode we had was about... You get a little backstory between the blonde girl who is like a really important person. I'm sorry I don't remember the names and it's you know, I watched season one like last year and now I'm watching season two and I wasn't I really like Attack on Titan and I really like the action of it. And you find out this one girl it was actually a secret Titan. Kinda of like uh like the main character of the show. But I didn't but she knew she was a Titan. So it's kind of interesting to see what this is going to turn out. But she's not as strong as the main character. Her, her Titan's a little smaller, a little more scrappy, I guess. But it was very, very cool to see. And I really enjoyed this episode. And we also, we found out this blonde girl, her name is Historia. That's that's her name, I just remember, because that's what the episode was called. And Historia, I guess it's going to play some kind of impact on the on the show but i don't know we'll we'll find out so the final part of the show next segment of the show is we have books so i'm continuing reading star wars thrawn and the books get really really good the book we introduced grandma tarkin grandma tarkin is probably one of my top 10 star wars characters that's right i'm a i love bad guys in star wars and tarkin is working with price and we finally learned 
that Price has just become a governor. She's become governor of Lothal. And it was very, very cool episode, or very cool of reading the book. I'm getting closer and closer to the end of the book. So, more on that once I actually finish it. And now we're talking about a passion project. This can be anything from movies, television, video game, anime, or books. And this week, I'm choosing books. And I am choosing a book called Star Wars, Darth Bane, Path of Destruction. This is the first book of the great Darth Bane trilogy. Darth Bane is this book series, which is all about... How when how did the Sith go from a huge army that you see in Star Wars: The Old Republic to just being two like of Darth Sidious and Count Dooku that you see in Episode Two or in Episode One with Darth Maul? And the basic of it is that Darth Bane is this character who he starts out this really low. He's a minor, and he he just starts out this really low character. He starts and he joins the Sith army. And he realizes that the Sith, these Sith were basically pretend Sith. They weren't the true Sith. Because the true Sith, they, these Sith were just, they were bashing up in numbers. And Darth Bane's whole ideology was that there only needs to be two. He studied the holocron of Darth Revan. And he basically, and he comes up with this philosophy of the rule of two. Which basically states, two there should be. One, one to embody a power, the other to crave it. And that way the Sith do not become uh, weaker because the Sith would you would have the you would have a Sith master would have two apprentices. The two apprentices would team up with each other to take out the main Sith. Then the the Sith then the two aren't as strong as the as the master. So the two apprentices so the two so the Sith order becomes weaker and weaker. And they couldn't fight the Jedi that way. They how are they going to defeat the Jedi the same way? The the Sith armies were fighting army to army. They re- Darth Bane realized that only one person could actually defeat the Sith. The Jedi. We we don't need to be playing the Jedi way. We don't need to be fighting in the light. We need we're the dark side. We need to fight in the dark. So a very cool. It's a very cool book written by Drew Tarpishian. The first book, Sperry, as you see Darth, you see Bane becoming Darth Bane. And you have this romance, and Bane's like, I gotta get rid of her because she's she's just she's gonna hold me back. It's funny because in the prequels, the Jedi do not want loved ones because it's a because it can lead to the dark side. Losing them could lose them to the dark side. Well, the Sith don't want a loved one either because if they have a loved one, then it it makes them weaker and it can pull them to the light side a little more and makes them weaker. That they won't, that they can lose someone. So overall, I really enjoyed this. The I've I enjoyed this book. I will I want to reread it one day, but I will talk about the other two books as I as I move along in this show. But that ends my book review of Path of Destruction. Check it out, Star Wars: Star Fame, Path of Destruction. Re- review uh, written by Drew Carbishian. So that concludes episode three of the Darth Easy Show. So guys, if you like if you like this podcast, make sure you download it on iTunes. Check it out wherever podcast you're actually listening to this on. So as always, make sure you check out my YouTube channel, www.youtube.com dash Darth Easy. I'll have reviews of of Arrow Flash and I'll also have reviews of Baywatch. I'm seeing that actually I'm seeing that probably tomorrow. And then I'm seeing next Tuesday I'll get to see Pirates of the Caribbean, Ted Ben, and Tell Them Tales. So very much looking forward to uh so make sure, I hope y'all enjoy this podcast. So until next time, bye. Watch out, 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 watch out